Hello, everyone. I'm Chad Nelson. Yeah, so it's been an interesting journey working with OpenAI and their tools and seeing how that's actually affected my creative process. And so for today, I wanted to talk about specifically ChatGPT and how it's expanded my creativity. And I think it's interesting that I use the word expand because it's not replacing my creativity. It's definitely given me, as you heard Sam say, superpowers in so many ways. Uh, one of the first things a year and a half ago when I got access to Dolly, uh, Dolly 2 specifically, I started creating with it. And I started creating characters. That's one of the things I do as a creative director is I invent stories and characters and, and short films and so forth. And so this collage here was actually the first thing I did with Dolly in the first eight hours that I ever used the tools, which to me was incredible as an artist because I'd never seen I had never produced at that speed before. I'd never actually created with like that kind of fidelity and that output quality picking up a new piece of software. And so when you think about creativity, a lot of people kind of assume it's, it's like a linear journey. You have this idea in your head, and then you kind of just go along on a vector, and you eventually get to the result. And in many ways, a lot of the AI tools in the beginning were like that. I mean, even Dolly was. I mean, you basically would come up with an idea, and you'd, you'd put it into the system as a prompt, and you'd eventually get the results. And if you didn't like it, you'd do it again and again and again. And eventually, you got to the thing that you liked. But I found what's fascinating is that's not really how a creative works. Uh, the creative journey is, is far more, well, it looks something more like this. Which it's, 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 it's really, truly a journey. There's branches. You go down different avenues or, or paths of your imagination and start exploring all these different areas of how your ideas can be just pushed in different directions. And so I want to kind of walk it through an example here in just a few minutes of how I'm using GPT in my own creative process. So this is a character I made with Dolly, or Dolly 3 specifically. And I brought it into ChatGPT using the vision tool and said, OK, well, describe this picture. And I'm not going to read this paragraph or these three paragraphs here. But you can see it. it's almost like a court reporter's description, very clinical, very factual, but not a lot of personality to it. But I was like, OK, wow, it's, it's actually able to read the image and, and see kind of this character. But let's actually take it a little further and say, OK, well, what if I just said, what's its nickname and backstory? And now you can see, and actually gave me a number of different responses, but these were two of my favorite. You know, this is Barnaby Bunker Snout, or it's Percival Percy Tailwind. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. Now I'm already starting to see who this character is, and maybe a little of the backstory. And I like this Percy one. So I'm like, okay, let's just dive a little deeper into this one and say, okay, well, where does Percy live? If he's now the inherit he has inherited this golf course from the owner that passed away, you know, what's his place look like? Where does he live? So I asked GPT, and it gave me these renderings of his house. Now, I looked at that, and I was like, OK, that's interesting. It's a little too English country. You know, it's like a little too much English cottage, if you will. So I'm like, all right, well, let's just describe it now as maybe more of a wooden caddy shack. And you can see it even put in the label of Percy on the signage. And, and now I'm like, OK, this is feeling more like that character. I'm like, all right, what does it look like inside? And now you can see, and I asked for a, specifically a hammock for a bed. And, Again, Dolly is basically just doing these things. I'm not having to constantly teach it and retrain it who this character is or describe the house. It's already building the intelligence about this world that I'm now creating like before my eyes. And as you look at the little character over there, Percy, I mean, it looks like he would live in this place. Maybe it's a little too clean, but pretty good. All right, now, as I said, in that picture of creativity, all the different branches, going back to this paragraph, now this is also intrigued me. Like, who's this owner that you know, he inherited this course from, that they became inseparable friends? So I asked GPT again, and it gave me this story about Chester Greenleaf and this whole, you know, he was like an advocate of, of the woodland creatures of the, the forest and so forth. I'm like, OK, this is fascinating. And of course, my next question is, well, what does he look like? And again, it gave me a number of images, but this is one of my favorites. And like, again, you're, like, you're seeing like, these, this world is starting to actually become real. And I'm steering it. It's not like I'm just taking the image or the one image it gives me. It gives me a lot. But in this presentation, I'm showing you just basically what I thought were my favorites. And I thought, well, of course, there must be other characters. Maybe there's a golf course pro. What, who is that character? Maybe it's a little hedgehog. And sure enough, it gave me this cute little character. And so you can see now, I'm, like, I'm starting to build a world. Now, as a creative director, one of the things I do is pitching ideas. You also have to pitch ideas in a kind of a multimodal way. So it can't just be an animated series. It also has to be a toy line or a book series and so forth. 
So I was like, all right, well, what does Percy look like if he was a little, felt plushy? And Dolly 3 is now just generating it. I didn't have to describe who the character was again. I didn't have to describe what its outfit was. It already knew that from basically reading the image from my original upload. If I wanted to make a children's book about these characters, again, this is one of my favorite uh, of the ones that it gave me, one of my favorites. And I didn't even tell it they were Fairway friends. Like it knew the story, it knew the context. So to me, it's just so fascinating how I'm working now with this creative assistant, if you will, as almost like a partner and as a collaborator and not just as a, a, like a, a tool that's basically like just doing it all for me. Because again, I feel like I'm steering this, if you will, this creative ship, exploring a board game and so forth. So you can see, I'm just pushing it in all sorts of different ways. So if you think about that process, GPT, is very much like how I approach my own creativity. And it lets me explore all these different avenues and so forth. And what I find is, in the world of creativity, I mean, we basically have a finite time and budget. And in that finite time and budget, we always have to ask ourselves, well, how many things can I explore? How many different ideas or concepts can I actually explore in this time that I have? And in the kind of the past, I would say, maybe I'd get time, let's just say it's a given week. I'd be able to explore five ideas, eventually I'd get to the one I like, and then I'd present that to maybe a client, for example. But what I'm finding now with GPT is I'm actually exploring each idea in multitudes, like taking it much deeper. And as a creative, that actually is the most exciting thing for me because it lets me actually take risks or chances or explore different areas of the ideas that I, I might not have even had the time to do prior. And to me, that ultimately means I'm ultimately gonna get to a better creative choice in the end. So that's just a very, very quick look at it. Uh, again, my name is Chad Nelson. You can find me at Daily Dolly, my Instagram account. Send me a message if you wanna reach out, but uh, thank you so much.